Hello, everybody, and welcome. Today, I have yet another sister, Brady Gerlitsky, all the way from Kona, Hawaii, who is a relationship coach. Brady has dedicated her to, uh, her time and talent to helping women um, have the best marriages possible. Um, I love what Brady does, and I love what I've learned about relationships. And to me, um, it's fascinating how, in its essence, it really aligns so beautifully with Nurtured Heart. If I was to summarize relationships to the best of my understanding, I would say that um, relationship really believes in the possibilities of marriage, of, of marriage being beautiful, of marriage being um, satisfying, um, of, of finding true happiness in marriage, regardless of who the two people are and what baggage they carry and where they come from and what they've been through and even the history within their marriage. There's a ton of trust and a ton of belief. And what I've what I've found in the process of talking to Frady and, and hearing about everything that she shares is there's this emphasis on finding the value and the beauty and really trusting your spouse and not um, diagnosing dysfunction and finding the issues and what needs to change. Um, and, and it's so powerful and empowering. And also an emphasis on something else that I love about it is the emphasis is on the one who's being coached. So when I'm coaching with Frady, the emphasis is on me and um, looking at what I contribute and, and me leaning into trust and me leaning into like energetic alignment, energetic attunement, words we use in Nurtured Heart. It's empowering because it's only about me changing. So I love that. So, Freddy, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, you know, obviously, relationship is a whole approach. You know, I think there's like 13 principles um, in relationship. But if you could, if you would just, you know, pick one thing to elaborate on or um, piggyback off of what I said, you know. Yeah. So, first of all, <laughs> thank you for um, always helping me see my children in that light and um, figuring out how to feel connected with them at all times and not need to worry about certain behaviors, but really fuel that energy towards their greatness, which really is the truth about them. So I really appreciate you and the gift that that has given me. Um, and yeah, it is really interesting that relationship and, and nurtured heart, like you said, you know, you'll tell me an example for my kids and I'm like, yeah, it's literally the same thing I say for marriage. Um, there is a distinction in the way that we, like you said, we look for value. So with our kids, we're looking for value, which is the truth about them. Um, but there also is that sense of like, I, I'm the adult here, right? I want to build their inner wealth. I want to help them with challenges that are come their way. Like I, I have the information, I have the skills, I have the tools more than they do. And so I'm going to try and, and raise them up in the best way most connected way possible. So we're looking for, in, in relationships, we want to receive our, our husbands. We want to be, instead of being in a space of judgment and fear and evaluating their actions or seeing the negative things that they do and making it, making it who they are, we also want to leave space for their choices, their life, their decisions without jumping to making it mean all kinds of judgments, right? Like, oh, they don't care. They're so selfish. They're so stupid. They don't make good choices, right? So we, we want to like leave space for um, what's whatever's going on for them. And then we also want to find the value instead of going down the path, just like NHJ, right? Like I could see um, a lot of women will get so upset that their husband is spending so much time at work. Like you think work is more important than our family and why don't you you know, why are you on this work call? But when we step into space and value, we realize like, why is my husband at work? And what does that contribute to me? My husband going to work is financially supporting our family and he's so committed and his work is, takes him, takes up so much of his free time. And yet he's, he's so committed to doing that because he wants to provide for me and for our family. And I love that. And I, I really, really value that. And from a space of value, there's ways to honor myself, right? And, and express something 
whatever it is that I'm wanting. Um, but I want to really be in a space of valuing my husband instead of, instead of judging him. The distinction with NHA is like, I'm looking for my husband's value because I believe it's there and because I want to feel connected to my husband and I want to, I want to feel positive about him. And I want to be a person that is willing to like stand for the value in myself and in my spouse, but I'm not trying to see his value so that he'll show up better so that he'll learn from me how to, you know, like I'm giving him positive reinforcement so that he'll be like, Oh, I could do this. Like, I'm not trying to build his inner wealth. I'm not trying to be the adult here. I really want to come from a space of deep trust and admiration of my husband and what he's capable of and believing in him um, from a receptive place, from a place of like being open to what he's offering me and our family instead of, you know, trying to like, I've got it together, he doesn't. And so I'm going to try and like build him up to a place where he doesn't need to um, kind of like we do to our, to a kid, right? Like trying to, um, get them to have a positive portfolio of themselves so that they can then operate from that place. I want to trust that my husband is a big boy. He's got it together. He doesn't need my help. He has everything he needs. And it's such a gift to me to, to just open myself up. There's growth available to me when I open myself up to seeing his value, um, yeah. So just in that way, right? Like I'm not becoming the adult in this relationship and doing that to stroke his ego or to um, raise him up to where he can be a functional adult. I want to see where he's already that person. Yeah. It's interesting what you're saying. Um, a lot of people are coming to Nurtured Heart with teenagers, young adults, kids who are already adults. And the intensity there is like, that much more intense you know your little kids are making you crazy they're little you know you can you still feel like you have a sense of control but the older ones it's very obvious that you don't <laughs> you've tried everything right um and the thing is is that the essence of nurtured heart it, it, it's an interesting distinction because within the distinction i even want to make a distinction about nurtured heart <laughs> even with a nurtured heart it's a surface level nurtured heart to find value in my kids which we say finding greatness, but yeah, right. It's like all really the same thing, but finding greatness in our kid in order for them to build a good portfolio is still with an agenda and still with an outcome, which right. is where most of us start and is what, what most of us, why most of us would even learn the approach. And I feel like probably in relationship then for me, for sure. Also, when I first started talking to you about marriage and stuff, there is this sense of like, I want to make him a better husband, right? Like I want to, I want to fix what I don't like. And with kids, it's the same way. I'm coming to Nurtured Heart because I want to fix what I don't like. I want to, I want to fix my kids. I want to make, you know, make them better. And I think the surface level is that idea of like, okay, I'm going to build their inner wealth. I'm going to have them have a better portfolio about themselves. And then with that better portfolio, they're going to, you know, be able to stand in that. And there is truth to that, even just in the way life works. When people feel better about themselves, they act better. Um, and that distinction about responsibility is for sure, like we're responsible for our kids. We're not responsible for our husbands. Our husbands are men, like you said, a big boy, like he doesn't need me to take responsibility for him. Um, and actually I've learned from you taking responsibility for him is actually the worst thing I can do if I want him to be the man. <laughs> if I want him to take, to take that space in the marriage, I need to stop taking it for him and yeah. stop filling that space. And that's what I heard you say about like take, making that space, creating that space and being receptive of like, no, he's got this and he's going to show up. So I don't have to show up for him and I don't have to manipulate him into showing up all of that. Um, but the distinction within the distinction for nurtured heart, even though I am responsible for my kids and especially for those with teenagers or young adults, who have proven impossible to control already, um, is that really the, the layers of the onion as they peel, as we get deeper into nurtured heart, the truth is it's also about, ref we, we talk about recognition with the word recognition because instead of praise or compliments, because we're recognizing what is from a place of really seeing it actually and really appreciating it actually. And when I really see it and I really appreciate it, how could I not trust my kid? 
if my kid is literally the coolest person ever and so well equipped for their life because I'm finding evidence of that all day long, then their behaviors, their negative behaviors, their negative things, their diagnosis won't scare me because why would it scare me? They're the coolest person ever. They're completely equipped. And the evidence of that is building that trust. So I do feel like there's even, even within the distinction, there, that, that sense of responsibility, yes, that's like, a, that's like a thing, but even with a nurtured heart, there's what to learn from what you're saying about relationship of like, it's not about making my kid into a great kid. It's about seeing how they already are a great kid because they already are, they are the best equipped for their life, even better than me, even though I'm an adult and I'm their parent. They are already everything they're going to be, everything they need to be at a, you know, four-year-old level or a 14-year-old level. That's exactly who they're meant to be. And I can sit back, not try to make them into anything, sit back and watch how, what, what's so great about that 14 year old version of them and get to know how amazing they are. Um, it's very true. And even as I was explaining it, I was thinking about that because nurtured heart can be looked at as manipulating our kids, right? Like we're, we're manipulating and I, I don't experience it that way. Um, so even I was, as I was explaining the distinction, I'm thinking like, I'm also not seeing my kids value in order for them to like do more of that. Right. Cause that also would be manipulating. Um, in my experience, like what, you know, the, the conversations we've had where I've been able to like, I, I feel like I have that shift of energy. It's all in the energy and from a space of worrying and fear and evaluating my kids' behaviors and evaluating my space as a mother and how well I'm doing and what's going to be, everything is such a big deal. And, and the, the negative is popping out at me and I'm like, ah, control yourselves. And then from a, a shift in energy of like getting back into my heart and, you know, you told me like, imagine, like vi visualize them as adults with everything that you want them to have all the great qualities that you want them to have. Imagine you knew for sure that that's who they were going to be. Like, what would this mo how would that change this moment? And I was like, oh my gosh, if I knew that their future was bright and they would have everything that they needed and they would be kind, good hearted people, who cares that they're being wild right now and like not listening the first time, you know, like, so what? So they're wonderful, lively people, like you said. Um, and from that space, getting them to like do whatever they need to do just flows. Like there's no, they listen way better. It just is the way it is. And I feel connected and that's such a gift to me to be connected to my children. So yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that because it's, it's very true. I think the only, I think my only point in the distinction there is like, it could get tricky as far as like just being the adult in the situation, maybe. Like there's a certain level of I'm the one that is supposed to have this more together. And so, you know, whatever, it's just the way it is when I'm the adult in the situation. And I don't want to be the adult in the situation with my husband. I want my, I, I want to, yeah, I want to really see him as the adult that he is and be able to lean into that and, um, and let go and let my fears go in the space, in, in that, in his presence, instead of operating from any sense of, adulthood is the best word that I can think of. Well, yeah, I mean, it's been huge to, because the reason why I would want to kind of manage his emotions or choices or um, ways of operating at all is coming from a place of fear that he isn't enough of an adult, that he isn't enough of a man, that he isn't enough of a husband, that he isn't enough of a father and that I somehow need to make that better or else, or else my life won't be good. It'll compromise my life or it'll compromise my kid's life. It'll compromise my home. And so I'm evaluating, you used that word before, which it's such a good word. I, like we don't really use it in nurtured heart, but like that's such a good word. Like I'm evaluating his behaviors, his actions, his choices, his words. I'm looking, looking, looking because I, because I'm, I'm, because I wanna make sure that he's gonna be the, the best father and the best husband and not, not even the best, but he's going to be enough <laughs> and he's going to be enough of a husband, enough of a father, enough of a, of a partner in the, in the house or whatever. And, and so, and so I'm really like in nurtured heart, we say like, you see what you look for. We're really looking for evidence of where he's flawed and what his problems are. And, um, the thing about the shift 
is more than just finding what I'm grateful for, which helps um, also, but it's still like taking responsibility. Like, let me find how he's really, like, that's, I think, the distinction you were saying. Like, it's not, let me find what he's good at so that I could make him feel like a good husband or, or so that I could prove that he's a good husband so that he'll be a better husband or whatever. That, like, manipulation piece, it's still taking responsibility. It's still trying to make him into something that I don't really believe he is or that I'm afraid he's not. Um, leaning into trust, and this is what I was thinking about when you were talking, is this snowball, this positive snowball effect, this positive spiral of spiral upwards instead of spiral downwards <laughs> of if I reset myself to trusting that it's, I, I feel like I wish that there was a stronger word for trust. If I reset myself to humility, to, to a little bit of humility, this is a man who is a full-blown adult who you chose to marry, by the way, <laughs> who has lived his entire life up until now, right? And managed just fine. He's smart. He's successful. Like, like, stop thinking you're better than everyone. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it, there is a humility to it of yeah. like, why do you think you know better? Why do you think you're all perfect and he's somehow flawed? Like, what, what makes you think that you should, that you could judge him. Like, look at yourself, right? Like, what, what, what is this even about? But then like that, so that like leaning into that space of like, no, I married a good man. I married a man that I love, that I, that I, that I thought would be great. And, and believing, allowing that to be enough for me to trust, not needing to evaluate, to find whether or not it's true. And, the spiral that I'm talking about is that then brings to me not looking for evidence of flaw, not looking for evidence of how he's failing. So I'm not noticing those things. If I am noticing those things, I'm resetting myself, right? And I'm, and I'm just trusting that he's bringing a lot. And so then it's like, okay, so what is it that he's bringing? I trust that he's bringing a lot. What is it that he's bringing? Um, and the permission not have to work hard to make the marriage good is also a huge piece of it. He's happy here. He's he's here for me. He's here for the long game. Trusting him in that, then I can just focus on what I want and what I what what makes me happy and what I want to do and um, trust that he is happy for me to be happy. And then I start to appreciate the truths that I'm believing, and and starting to see naturally see evidence of that, like. For example, you've taught me to really think about what I want. Like, what do, what do I want? I don't have to ask, what would he want me to want? Is it okay for me to want what I want? What does he want? No, he's happy for me to be happy. We're two adult individuals living our lives and I have permission to literally go at life and have the best life ever. And he's supporting that. So like, I used to, try to spend time every night and I would evaluate like how much time did we spend tonight? How many conversations did we have? How long were the conversations? Was how much eye contact was there? So much evaluating. And and it was it my fault that we didn't talk or was it his fault that we didn't talk? And what do we do about the fact that we didn't talk? Versus like because married couples should talk and should spend time. And if we're not spending time then we don't have a good marriage or we're not loving each other or something's wrong. When you're connected. And when you've encouraged me to step into like what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? He wants me to be happy. I can just do me. I can find what I love. I can find what I'm happy about and and know that he's supporting me. And then like, I feel that way. I actually feel that way. Like when he's happy that I spent all evening on the computer and when I come out, he's happy to hear about what I did and he's happy to not spend time and he's happy to spend time and whatever. It's like, he's so supportive of me doing whatever I want. And then I, and I appreciate, I just appreciate everything when I'm coming from a place of trust. And then there's so much more to, to trust. I trust more because I see evidence of that. And yeah, and that just builds and builds and builds. And that's how it is in Nurtured Heart too. Once I see the kids, um, I, once I, once I see, once I prove, once I choose to trust my kids and let go, use my stance. 
and I start to see that it was good I did that. Like my kids are actually amazing. <laughs> that builds more trust to then build more greatness, to then build more trust, to then build more greatness. Yeah. Okay, so- Brady, this is supposed to be an interview of you. Would you just like <laughs> to say anything? <laughs> Yeah, that's beautiful. And I I think what I hear you saying is that like it's scary to it's scary to lean into trust in the beginning, especially when you have so much evidence of the opposite, right? Of feeling like he's not capable or he's not showing up. And how could I trust? Like what is there to bank on? Um and the reality that as long as I'm as long as I'm in evaluation at all times, like, does he love me? Does he care about me? Is he, what did that comment mean? Is he trying to hurt me? Does he care about me? Does he value me? Does he, did he notice what I did today? Does he think I'm not doing enough? Does he want more of me? Then it's so heavy. It's so heavy. And there's going to be so much defensiveness. And um, I love that you said it takes humility because like, where does judgment come from? I start judging when I, I'm in fear when I'm, I'm afraid that he's judging me. So I'm going to judge him first, or I'm going to, it's just a space of, of operating outside of myself, right? Like when I'm, there's his paper and then there's my paper. And when I'm all over his, and when I am, I'm watching how he walks through the door and seeing like, is he going to smile at me or not? And that's going to base if we're connected or not. And if he likes me or not, and what's available to me or not, then my safety, my security, my joy, it's in somebody else's hands. It's, it's an experience outside of me. And it's so painful. Um, it's a roller coaster. It's, I, I have to constantly check in. Am I safe? Am I not? Are we connected? Are we not? The same thing with like spending time, right? Like conventional methods will say, um, go out once a week. And like, that's how to have a good marriage. That's how to connect. And going out once a week doesn't necessarily breed connection. I mean, it can create context for a connection. It can be a nice way to not have distraction so that we can have a great time. But if I'm in a space of evaluating, like you said, right? Like were our conversations good enough? Was there eye contact? Are we having deep, meaningful conversations? Is he sharing his feelings with me? Then the whole outing is gonna be heavy. I'm gonna end up less connected. I'm gonna end up feeling resentful. I'm gonna end up feeling exhausted. I didn't get to enjoy. I didn't get to connect. I had to. I, had, I have to wait for him to tell me that I'm allowed to connect because I need something to bank on. So that piece of being willing to open myself up to trust means like trusting the connection breeds connection. Questioning the connection is always going to call my connection into question. And so choosing, like you said, like for today, I married, right? I want to operate from a space of my own heart, from my own connection. If I want to feel connection to my husband, then how can I connect to my husband? What, what would I do if I believed that my husband loved and cared about me? What if I didn't, if I could challenge the narrative that, you know, of all my um, negative beliefs around him, what he is and isn't capable of, the rules that I've set up for my, for my relationship, for my family, if we don't spend quality time every night, then we're not connecting. Like, I love that vision. Like, I get to, like, live a wonderful life and when I'm living in my joy and from an internal space, then my husband is such a gift to me. And I come out smiling and that's connection right there. Like, I don't need to say certain things. I don't need to ask certain questions. He doesn't need to share his emotions in a well enough way. It's just connection that flows. It's connection that's coming from me instead of waiting for him to allow me the freedom to open my heart to him. I'm free to have an open heart. When I come with an open heart, I'm no longer defensive. I'm no longer giving over the message of, you're a little bit threatening to me. I don't really trust you. Like every day you need to prove to me again that I'm your priority, that I matter. I know that I matter. I know that you love me. I know that you're not out to get me. And so if I can lean into that space, how can I, live from my desire. Like, what am I wanting? Instead of getting, trying to get him to change things, what am I wanting? When I am living from an internal space, everything's available to me. 
and in an abundance. And so when I'm not questioning and when I'm in trust, I get to connect all the time. I get to feel embraced by my husband all the time, whether or not he's feeling my specific love language, right? Like there's just so much love and connection and support to go around and everything is just so much lighter. Like the, the freedom, the breath of fresh air that comes with that is just so beautiful. And, um, everything from there, like you said, the spiral, there's so many other pieces and there's so many other specifics of, you know, what to do and how to process things and how to, how to shift into, um, a, a larger, uh, a larger perspective. Um, but I think really like, yeah, leaning into trust is a big one. Yeah. If, if what we're saying doesn't sound, sounds like so impossible, too good to be true. I just, I need to like put in a plug, like it's, it is too good to be true, but it is true. Like thousands of women are, have done this work and are experiencing so much joy in their marriage. And that wouldn't mean anything to me if that's not my experience, but it is my experience. It's so, so beautiful how much, how happy I am in my marriage doing the work that I'm doing with Brady. And I'm so blessed really, because I feel like the luckiest woman in the world and really like it's just my own shifts and it's, it's so incredible. So yeah, it's really cool work. It's really powerful. So yeah. So Frady, um, I'd love for my audience to know how to reach you and what resources they could expect if they want to take a little, a big dive or a little toe dip into the, into this approach. I know you do one-on-one coaching, um, but how can they find out more and what can they expect? Yeah. So the website is createrelationship.com. There are occasional workshops by different coaches. There's also a WhatsApp community that you can join. Um, Yeah. And then there's one-on-one coaching. There's um, a a bunch of us coaches. Um, You can find out our information off of the website. And um, thanks for having me. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks for being here. And if there's anything anything that I have learned with Frady and relationships is don't give up on your marriage. Don't decide that it's over um, because there's hope. It's really powerful stuff. Thank you, Frady. And we will see you all next time.